Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. In our last video, we took this big piece of pine, made the bottom flat, and used a thickness planer to bring it down to thickness. The idea was, how do you increase the capacity of your thickness planer if you don't have a jointer, a power jointer that's the same width? Whatever you do to the bottom ends up happening to the top if you just simply send it through your thickness planer. So now that we've got it flat, parallel to top and bottom, but it still has mill marks from the thickness planer. So somebody had asked, well, can you demonstrate planing a wide board with a hand plane? So that's what we'll do. Uh, first thing I want to walk you through is how I prepare the blade. Now I have a good friend in England, David Charlesworth, and David does his a little bit differently, and we, uh, we agree to differ. He uses what's called a camber. So he'll take his blade and put a very slight radius on it. I prefer the method that's taught by Ian Kirby, where you have your blade straight from corner to corner, but you feather off the two outside corners ever so slightly. Both work. I just happen to like mine better. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I use two stones. My diamond, my trend diamond plate, which has a 300 grit side and a 1000 grit side. And I use as a finishing stone my 16,000 Shapton. So before I sharpen, I come over, use the 300 grit side. This takes a few seconds to bring this back to being flat. Remember, this one wears and has to be maintained. And I'm, I'm using a product called Honewrite. There's a bottle of it right there. That little bottle makes uh, six liters or a gallon and a half, and it, it inhibits water from rusting metal. Now, it doesn't absolutely prevent it. If you leave it laying in a, in a puddle of Honewrite, you may end up with rust the next day, but it would certainly dry on there without ever creating any rust. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is come over here to our 1,000 grit stone, reference the blade on the primary bevel, that's that 25 degree main bevel, raise it up a few degrees off of that, spend about 10 seconds doing these little circles, and I hold the blade on an angle so that when I'm doing this, I'm on the blade, on the stone the entire time. I'll show you what I mean in a second, just let me get through this. Oh, I want to pick up a burr, but it's not quite definite, so, or not, not, I shouldn't say that, it's not running corner to corner yet, so I'll go a little bit further. Okay, now I have a burr corner to corner. I don't hold my blade like this, because in doing these circles, you'd be off the stone part of the time. I hold my blade like this, so in doing the circles, I stay on the stone. <coughs> Excuse me, now that I got a bit of a burr, I'll come over here to my 16,000 stone. I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to raise up another couple of degrees. So if I came up three or four degrees off of the primary bevel on that first stone, on this one I'm going to come up four or five degrees. So locate your primary. I got some dirt in there or something. Locate your primary, come up a little bit higher. Same thing, 10 seconds of work. Three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10. Now without stopping or changing or doing anything, I simply push down on one corner for 3 seconds. Then I'm going to push down on the opposite corner using the pinky on my left hand for 3 seconds. And what that does is create a little feathering on those outside corners. Now when you're doing it freehand, especially when you're new at it, you may get one, you may not get the other. And the reason why I said not to stop or change or do anything different is because what frequently happens is that... Uh, Folks will stop, reposition, and then they end up dropping down and they're actually touching the heel as opposed to the tip or the toe of the blade. Now as a final step, I'll use, as I mentioned, the Charlesworth ruler trick. Hold that in place, set the blade on there, stay within a quarter of an inch of the opposite edge, and just a few seconds to remove any burr. That was David Charlesworth's contribution to the art of planing. And I would go down to saying it was probably the biggest contribution, certainly in the last, well, I think you could say 100 years. And if you don't, uh, if you've never tried it, it is the biggest single time saver and guarantor of a great edge, if it can be such a thing, that you will find. Put your chip breaker on, pull it back, slide it over. Now get it to within about a 32nd of an inch of the edge. Snug that up good and tight. I'm trying to cover all the bases here, just in case you're doing this for the first time. Three points of contact when you put your blade and chip breaker in. 
the back of the blade laying flat on the face of the frog so you don't want any debris in there. The yoke, this thing right here, has to pass through the blade and make it into this little rectangular hole in the chip breaker. That's how you advance and retract the blade. And this lateral adjustment lever has a bearing on the end and that bearing has to fit in this long slot on the blade. And that's how you skew the blade. Now this is critical because part of getting this surface perfect is getting that blade absolutely parallel to the sole so you're not having one corner or the other digging in and leaving what we would call a plane track. Set that in place and I just kind of tap it to make sure it sounds like it's sitting flat. Sometimes that little lateral adjustment lever, that bearing doesn't quite sit in there and you got to give it a little bit of coaxing. Now I like to take a, a light colored background, sight down the sole, wipe one way, sight down the sole. Now the blade is sticking up higher on the left side than the right, so I'm going to take the lateral adjustment lever and I'm going to push it toward that high side. And I'll do that until it appears to be parallel, at which point I like to pull the blade all the way in so that it's not exposed at all. And that's the way I prefer to start planing. Take a little bit of wax, and that's just there to reduce the friction so that your effort is spent pushing the blade through the wood instead of pushing the, pushing the plane over the wood. Now, before we uh, get any further, let's dog this down just to keep it from sliding around on me. Now, this is a wide board, and it's a little bit awkward planing way out here, as you'll see. But we have to do it. Now, I like to uh, just drive those dogs down, pull that nice and flat to the table. Now, we've got a little bit of snipe right here and right here, so we're going to have to work through that. But the first thing I'm going to do, now you'll notice I'm also going to hold my plane on an angle, because if I were to plane this way, I'm only reading a swath that wide. But if I hold my plane like that, I'm now reading a swath that wide, and it makes it a lot easier to them end up with this board being flat. So as I'm planing, I'm going to start spinning the adjuster knob, and I want to watch to see where the first bit of shaving comes out. That seems to be favoring the left side, so I'm going to just a very slight. And by the way, when I do this, instead of taking that and just pushing it, I grab one side of the blade with my thumb, index finger on the lateral adjustment lever and just kind of squeeze and I find you get a little more control we're talking about moving a very small amount literally measures in parts of a thousand thousandth that is pardon my cold still a little heavy on the still heavy on the left side get a little bit more bring the blade out a little bit more okay now that seems to be uniform now that thickness planer leaves little scallop marks as a result of a circular cutter head. So when you first start planing, you're just going to be taking the tops of those off. So I don't expect to get a full wood shaving yet. Now with each pass, I have to overlap the previous one. I should have started on a nice narrow board. All right, this is pine, so I can take a little heavier, I can take a much heavier cut. I'm going to advance that blade a fair bit. Let's see if I can't get to the point where we're bringing off the full wood shavings a little sooner. So, just to show you, oh, my pencil is. That first pass was right about here, so the next one needs to be from there to there. And then the next one would be from there to there, and we just work our way across. snipe as quick as I can. Now, many people prefer to lift the plane up and then set it back down. Each time, I don't. I hear all kinds of stories of how it dulls the blade prematurely, but I can sharpen it in under 30 seconds, so 
all off for the convenience of not having to lift this thing up 500 times during a job like this. Nice easy wood to plane by the way. Great stuff to practice on. <coughs> now, occasionally I'll stop and I'll use the edge of my plane like this to identify if I'm keeping that flat or if I'm taking too much off of one side or the other. I do have some high edges, so take a pass here. Now that snipe has disappeared over here, but there's still some there. And pretty much, oh, there's a little bit over here too. So until I get rid of all the surface defects, I'm not gonna worry too much about plane tracks, meaning the corners of the blade digging in. I don't want it to be extremely off at this stage, but I'll get a lot fussier once I bring this all down to one, one plane. Okay, now that's closer. Now we can pay attention to the finer setting. So I'm just going to sight down here again and see if I can't notice. Uh, looks like the blade is still a little bit high on that stubborn left side. A little more wax. Pull the blade in a little bit. I'm using a number six. I could be using a number seven jointer. This one's 18 inches long, it's called a four plane. There's a number seven, it's 22. Number eight is 24. My five and a half is missing, it's 14. My, my smoother, could use that too. That was 10. We do a few. Okay, I that that's the safety valve went on our compressor. I want to show you what we're looking for. Here's an ideal shaving. See how it tapers off to nothing on both edges? Uniform thickness right at the middle, but nothing on both edges. That allows you to overlap and, and not be able to see them. If your shavings are coming up, find one with a, a very hard to find edge, you know, something like that, then you're probably going to leave a plane track. Now this may have been over here on the edge, but that would be the same situation if you didn't have those edges feathered. All right, so, I'll well, just keep that overlapping each one. I often run my hand across the board just to kind of feel where the previous path was. Feels pretty good. I still have a little bit. Actually, no, that's a little bit of tearing. Tearing. That's uh, that's close. So I'm going to pull the blade in. That little effect with feathering of the edges works even better with a very very light pass, meaning the blades retracted. So that if you were to look, if you could see it, and you could look down there, you would see nothing. Then the blade would gradually appear. You'd see the blade all the way across, and then it would gradually disappear. But that's only going to be an effect when you have a really, really light setting. Feels good. I don't see any blatant gouges. I could probably improve that a little bit. Down here I skipped a couple of times, meaning when I first started the plane didn't engage right away. So I might take one more. 
series of passes. If you're really new to this, at this stage all my weight is here. Get the blade engaged. And then when I get out here, all the weight's back here so that the plane doesn't nosedive off the end. At this point, both hands are kind of pushing down and forward. The part that most people struggle with is the very beginning when they just start. The blade picks up or hits that resistance of meeting the wood and you give it that extra push to get it started and in doing so you upset your balance, cause the plane to jump. It settles down in here somewhere and the blade starts to finally engage and then you end up actually with a taper to the board because you're high here lower than the rest of it. Okay, I'll leave well enough alone. Now I can do a final check. This stuff is really soft so it's even possible that the corner of the plane will leave a mark. So I'm being careful. That looks good. This is going to end up being a chair seat or a bench seat. Now I've got to do something about this crack in here. I'll end up taking more of it off. But that's a, a simple lesson in planing a wide panel. Like I said, reaching out over there is difficult. But it's got a good, really good uh, sharp blade. It's uh, surprising how little resistance or effort is required in order to take a full wood shaving. Hope you enjoyed this. See you again.